Hey, scholars. We're now going to go through some of the fundamental rules of becoming an S-corporation. When do you have to file? Who's allowed to be a shareholder? And who's not allowed to be a shareholder? And as you can see over here, we've got my good buddy and partner in crime, Mr. Peter Olinto. And he's running this particular entity known as Sugar Bear Enterprises. And by the way, you wonder, yes, real world, Peter owns a yacht and it is named Sugar Bear. Yes, it is. Absolutely, positively the truth. Cross my heart. So let's take a look at this one. And look who he's pulling along, water skiing. Yeah, one of my favorite activities when I was a kid. Loved doing this. And um, oh my goodness, Mike Brown is gonna be very upset. Look who's on my shoulders. Ooh, Mike, I hope you don't get upset about this one. Well, anyway, we're gonna talk about in the year one, Angie, Tim and Pete form Sugar Bear Boating, a domestic corporation upon forming it all shareholders consent to the S election effective for the current year. So we're going to spend some time looking at this information. If you'll notice, if the election is made on or before the 15th day of the third month of the current year, then you file the form 2553 and the S election is effective. So let me give you an example. March 15th. As long as you file it before March 15th, it's retroactive to the beginning of the year. What happens if you just started a company on July 1? You just formed it. Obviously, March 15th has already come and gone. Well, very simply, you have the grand total of the same 75 days. So you'd have all of July, all of August, and you'd have to do it before September 15th. If you did it before the first 75 days of your first business year where you formed it sometime during the year, it's effective. Now, let's say you missed it. Let's say you're, you've been involved in a business and now it's all of a sudden September. Make the election and it's obviously before next year's March 15th. So it will become effective next year. A couple of other items you want to remember, S-Corps are permitted to have no more than 100 shareholders. Members of a family are counted as one shareholder for purposes of the 100 shareholder rule. A family includes common ancestors, linear descendants of the common ancestors, spouses, former spouses, and even estates. Sugar Bear Boating must screen all potential shareholders. Right? You to ensure that they are eligible. Ineligible shareholders include non-resident aliens, partnerships, corporations, and certain types of trusts. Sugar Bear Boating may not have more than one class of stock outstanding. Common. Differences in voting rights are acceptable. So you can have common stock where you and your brother and your sister are all owners. However, the ultimate kids who you want to get involved in the business that you're giving some stock to, you don't want them voting yet. So you can give them common. It just doesn't have voting preferences. Be aware you're not allowed to have preferred stock since it's only one type of stock that is allowed.